Welcome to part six of my best of App Lab series. In this series, we take a look at some of the best App Lab games you can get for your quest. Now, if you're not sure what App Lab is or how to download these games, then check out the first part of this video where I go into detail on how to find App Lab and download games from it. Now, I feature 10 awesome games in this video and I have one game code to give away. It's for Escape from Nefertiti's Tomb. This is a puzzle escape room game. I'll talk about it more later on in this video. I have timestamps below, so if you want to skip straight ahead to that game to find out what it's all about, then you can do that. And if you want to be in with a chance of winning this code, then make sure you let me know in the comments below when this item appears in the video. So through the power of editing, you're gonna see this item appear somewhere in the video. Let me know the timestamp in the comment section below. And if you give me the correct timestamp, I will put you in the draw for a chance to win this code. Now, one final thing, most of these games in this video are paid. I think there are a couple of freebies in here, but if you are after some free games, then I highly recommend checking out my video that looks at some of the best free games you can get on your quest right now. So that will be linked in the description below. Okay, now let's check out the list. As I always say, if you do like the video, giving the video a thumbs up really helps me out. And if you like it enough to subscribe to the channel, that would be most appreciated. So now onto the list. App Lab contains games and experiences that you can download straight to your Quest headset. You can get App Lab games by searching for them directly in store if you know the name of the game, or access a website like these from your Oculus browser to look at the list of available games. I will include these website URLs in the description. The first game on my list is a freebie that I think every Quest user has to try. It's Hannah in a Chopper 3. And you start off by controlling this chopper on a flat screen CRT monitor, having to navigate your way to the end of the level, completing some simple puzzles along the way. I'm thinking, yeah, this is all pretty cool. Doesn't really make the best use of VR though. And then this happens. So you go between controlling the chopper on a flat screen computer to controlling the chopper in this 3D environment, which is much more appropriate to VR. At least it uses VR a lot better than it does when just playing on this flat screen monitor. I think it's such a cool idea to mix these two ways of playing games together. It's like the game literally comes to life by coming out of the computer and adds a totally new dimension to the gameplay. In addition to being quite a unique game, there is tons of humour here too, and puzzles do get more challenging as the game progresses. With a total of 10 levels to complete and over 60 unlockable quest achievements and 10 custom animated items for your Oculus Home. So I was going to include this game in my list, it's Retro Bricks 1982. It's obviously a brick breaker game. And even though it was just the demo version, there was still quite a bit to get stuck into. That's why it made this list. But when I checked the App Lab store again, it seems to have disappeared. I'll leave it on here just in case it does come back at some point. And if it does, I'll pin a comment in the comment section with the link to this game. So instead, I have another freebie for you. This is Gods of Gravity. It's a celestial arcade style real time strategy game. How it works is you have two main types of ships. You have these rocket ships that are capable of destroying other ships. Then you have these shield ships that protect your rocket ships. And here's where the strategy comes in. You have to get the right combination of shield and rocket ships together. Then you can either fling them or open up wormholes to capture nearby planets. Holding planets and moons increases your ship production. So the more planets and moons that you have, the more ships you have. And when your fleet is big enough, you then send them to capture your enemy's home planet for the win. It's a really fun game that can get quite tactical and competitive. You can have from two to five player multiplayer, as well as a single player campaign that's fairly short at the moment as it's currently in beta, but I think they're going to be adding to that in future updates. Now my final freebie of this list is a Five Nights at Freddy's VR fan game. This is a horror game that genuinely gave me some jump scares. It is a demo, there are currently three levels to play and in this first one I'm playing here, you'll be watching the cameras and using your torch to keep the bad guys at bay. 
The gameplay mechanics do change with other levels, it's not just the same kind of stuff each level, but what doesn't change is the scare factor, it is definitely a creepy game, and one to definitely check out if you're a fan of these horror type games. Now I can't tell you how much I love this next game, this is Shotwood, it releases for App Lab on December the 23rd. It's a casual first person shooter single player game. So you start off inside this facility and the main aim of the game is to complete these kill house scenarios, clearing floors of these deadly wooden targets like these zombies and these terrorists. And while they are just wooden targets they can shoot back at you so you do have to duck and dodge between cover if you hope to get out alive and to help you do that you have a range of different weapons that you have to unlock by spending cash that you earn by completing challenges. And you can also find bundles of cash hidden throughout some of the stages. So in addition to these kill house scenarios, you also have this balloon stabber mini game and this brick shield mini game. You can earn some more cash with these mini games by completing challenges or you can simply gamble all of your earnings away playing cards with this simple jack arcade game. There's also a shooting gallery where you can practice your skills and a new blitz mode which is available for all 8 core assessment floors. When this mode is active, target locations are randomised, waves are disabled and the player's performance is graded on criteria like speed, accuracy, how much damage they take and how many friendly targets get hit. And the better you do, the higher the grade you get and the more money you receive. Now there's plenty to love about this game but I've got to say one of my favourite parts is the announcer who adds a nice element of comic relief. All of your progress will be lost permanently if you use the grievance button. If possible, never, repeat, never, use the grievance button. To signal your willingness to comply with the assessment program, please do not press the grievance button now. Viking Days is our next game and it might be one for you if you enjoy games like WarioWare. This game consists of 15 different mini games such as axe throwing, axe sharpening, bridge crossing, drumming and even running from a giant. And the aim of the game is simple, you have to survive as many days as possible living the domestic life of a Viking. Survival depends on successfully completing minigames and each minigame you complete is one full day. And as the days go on the minigames do get a lot more challenging. Trying to last as long as possible in this game does get addictive. And it's a really fun game and I think it would be a blast as a party game where you pass the headset around to your friends to see who can survive the longest. Yeah! Sucker Punch is our next game, it's a heart pounding arcade punch fest which is like Pong on steroids, your goal is to punch these cubes past your opponent into their net to score points. It's very fast paced, a lot of fun and good exercise too. There's a single player mode where you choose your level and match yourself against progressively harder AI opponents, a league mode with different divisions that get more difficult as you go on and you can win trophies in this mode, in addition to my favourite the multiplayer mode where you can go head to head with a friend and while the aim of the game is simple there is still quite a lot of content here for example you get to unlock and choose from an arsenal of different gloves each with their own unique powers and you have to mix and match them to find the pair that match your playstyle and tactics there's high scores and daily challenges as well as a range of different arenas to play in Sucker Punch is super easy to pick up and play, difficult to master and super addictive. Next on our list is another awesome shooting game, this is Dead Second. And this game reminds me of another popular app lab title, Crisis Brigade. You teleport to a location, take cover, clear an area of enemies and then move on to the next area until you reach the end of the stage. So similar to Crisis Brigade in terms of its gameplay, but unlike Crisis Brigade, I can actually complete this one. Crisis Brigade is a great game, it's just super tough. So Dead Second is in early access, but don't be put off by that because it is a very polished game, even at this point. There are five stages to play, three different difficulty settings, and a range of different weapons to unlock, with more content updates planned in future. 
Every time you defeat an enemy, it activates this cool momentary bullet time slow motion mode, giving you a chance to dodge incoming fire and chain a succession of takedowns in order to boost your score. You earn points by being quick, accurate, and taking enemies down in rapid succession. There are also leaderboards, and this is just a wicked arcade shooter that controls well with guns that feel good to handle and nice visuals and kind of reminds me a lot of Time Crisis in virtual reality. Simple Planes VR is a flight sim game with an ever expanding collection of aircraft to download and fly for free. It features airplanes, helicopters, cars, boats and more. So while the visuals might be simple, the beauty of this game lies in the amount of content and the mechanics. You get a sandbox mode, a combat mode, a races mode and a challenges mode. And these modes have quite a few stages to check out, that is except for the challenges mode at the moment which only features three separate challenges but I'm sure that will probably increase with future updates. And then there's the nice variety of vehicles you get to play with like airplanes, helicopters, cars, boats and the devs like I say plan to add more in future. So content wise this game is pretty solid. Now when it comes to the mechanics this is what makes the game really fun. You get to play around with all of these different cockpit controls in addition to weaponry if you are flying a combat craft. The physics seem realistic and the flying seems realistic enough. I don't play that many flight sims so I can't say exactly how real the flying is compared to the real thing but I can say this is probably the most realistic flight sim on the quest right now. Playing with all the buttons and levers, checking out the readouts and the dials and doing manoeuvres like landing and taking off is really satisfying. Just one word of caution though, if you do suffer from motion sickness, I couldn't see any comfort options on this game and flying is one of those things that can really trigger it. So if you do suffer from VR motion sickness, just keep that in mind before you buy. If you're a fan of escape room games and puzzle games then you'll probably enjoy these next two titles. What you're seeing here is Escape from Nefertiti's Tomb. Your goal is to explore and puzzle your way through several distinct different rooms, seeking out Queen Nefertiti's treasures and all the while avoiding traps so you can escape to tell your tale. I found the visuals to be pretty nice and there are some challenging puzzles in there. There's no obvious hints in the sense that you can't ask for a hint but you'll find some objects around the tomb that might give you some hints on how to solve the next puzzle. One thing I do recommend right away is in the options turning the walking speed right up because you start off walking really really slow, too slow for me, but once I turned it all the way up then it was no problem. And the other escape room game I have for you is Paranormal Detective Escape from the 80s. Now if you're like me and you're an 80s nostalgia nerd then chances are exploring this game is going to put a smile on your face. But it's not just about nostalgia, I found this to be a good escape room game that will keep you occupied for a couple of hours at least. In this game you're a detective trying to solve the mystery of a disappearing child back in 1987. He just disappeared off the face of the earth and you have to solve puzzles in his game room which has been preserved ever since he went missing back in 87. So this game room is obviously filled with 80s toys that you have to play with to solve the mystery. V. R. You can also get hints using your phone if you ever do get stuck on any of the puzzles. Grapple Tournament VR, a thrilling VR arcade multiplayer shooter. That's our next game and it reminds me a lot of Quake 3 Tournament in virtual reality. It's very fast paced and there's lots of ways to get around like using your grappling hook, the double jump, climbing or wall jumping for example. Because it is so fast paced it can get a bit intense especially if you have VR motion sickness but there is a demo on App Lab, so you can always try it before you buy it. There are different multiplayer modes, you've got deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture point and mutant modes as well as a single player mode if you want to fight against bots. There are over 12 weapons to choose from and I really like the weapons, they feel good to handle and you can dual wield them as well. And the double handed weapons have both a primary and secondary fire mode. Now in addition to being quite exhilarating to play this game also feels balanced and it's definitely one of the better fast paced multiplayer shooters that I've played on the quest. So I hope you enjoyed that list. Did you find the hidden object? Remember if you want to be in with a chance of winning 
the Escape from Nefertiti's Tomb Code, you have to let me know in the comment section below the timestamp where the hidden object appears, and I will put you in the draw to win a code. So that's it from me today. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll catch you in the next video.